I call the honourable member Simon O'Connor. He now put. No, I'm not. I'm not accepting it. I'm going to call the honourable member Jacinda Ardern. The time has come. Thank you. Thank Senior you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr Chair, I'll concede that uh, I wasn't a member of the Select Committee, as my fine colleague Megan Woods, who I'm sure will get a call probably after me. Um, uh, but I did want to seek some clarification, Mr Chair, because anyone watching at home may not be clear after the Minister's intervention as to how exactly, uh, or whether exactly indeed, exemptions apply for charter schools. So a straight question for the Minister. Are there exemptions for charter schools around the Official Information Act and the Ombudsman Act? And I'd really appreciate just a simple yes or no. Are there exemptions for charter schools for the Official Information Act and the Ombudsman Act? Because as this law reads, as this bill currently reads, absolutely. In part two of this bill, there are two specific clauses which exempt charter schools. Now, what the Minister stood up and explained to the House was that essentially, if someone wants to seek information from a charter school, they can go to the Ministry. Now, that might sound like a rational argument, but what we're arguing is that all it will take is for the Ministry to simply take a don't ask, don't tell approach and not seek information from a charter school, for therefore there to be no information available to anyone. Because you cannot go to the school itself and seek that information. Now, why does that matter? Because we have seen examples, Mr Chair, of where the Ministry has behaved in such a way as to try and avoid having to expose information by taking on tactics like don't ask, don't tell. And probably the most recent example has been in Christchurch. Mr Chair, in Christchurch there were attempts to try and get information out of the Ministry around school closures. Now the Ministry told the Council, when information was requested, told Christchurch City Council to deny that it held information that it had. Now behaviour from a Ministry like that suggests to me that that's only one step removed from telling a charter school, don't give us any information, don't tell us. We might have to provide it to the public. You just hold on to it, or a parent. You hold on to it because you've got an exemption. You have an exemption from the law, so don't give it to us. And the example we saw out of Christchurch tells us that that is entirely possible from the kind of track record that we have, unfortunately, from the ministry currently. I'm not blaming the ministry, who knows what kind of direction they're getting from the current leadership. But not only that, they told the person who requested information from them to withdraw that request and told them they might get the information faster that way. And they repeatedly denied requests. Now, that was from the ministry. How do we know they will not manipulate the exemption that exists in this law as it applies to charter schools? Everything in their track record tells me that they might indeed do just that. And how do we know that they did that? How do we know that all of that behaviour occurred? Because they were investigated by the ombudsman because they were investigated by the Ombudsman. Exemption number two in this bill means that not only would we not have uncovered that kind of behaviour, we would not have had the ability to investigate it by the Ombudsman because of the exemption. And it's quite clearly set out. The Ombudsman was clear in its summary conclusions uh, on this issue. The Minister's, Ministry's responses, and I'm quoting from the report from the Ombudsman, the Ministry's responses to the Christchurch City Council were wrong. Issue number two, the Ministry was wrong to advise two principals to withdraw their official information at request. And finally, issue three, the Ombudsman intended to undertake an investigation into policy and practice of the Ministry of Ed regarding generally the way it had undertaken the school closures. We know that because of the important access the Ombudsman had, and yet this bill exempts charter schools from that. Now, if we were in a high-trust situation where we felt there would be absolute transparency, then perhaps there wouldn't be that layer of concern, but we are not in that environment. But I am yet to hear from the Minister the justification for why charter schools should have this kind of exemption applied to them. Now, Mr Speaker, the only reason that I can find, the only reason that I can find as to why we might have these kind of exemptions is that the public should have good reason to question what is going to happen in these schools. Good reason to be concerned about the way public money may be used in a school with unregistered teachers, 
with CEO-style principles and where we're starting to teach creationism. Mr Speaker, these are the schools where we should have absolutely absolute transparency, even more so than we have in any other school because of how highly experimental it is. Mr Chair, I have a second point. Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Member Cam Calder. I move that the question be now put. I'm going to call the Honourable Member Megan Woods.